Hello, Mr. Chambers. Can you tell us when and where you were born? I was born in the town of Black River, and it is the capital of the count parish of St. Elizabeth. And when I say that, I mean just like you think of London being the capital and all the places surrounding it. Like within London, you have on the outskirts, you have Balham, Tooting, Wandsworth. And Black River, um, so called because there's a river flowing from some distance, about 34 miles traveling up in the mountains. And as that water comes down from the mountain, it travels underground, out of the ground, underground and flowing a big mainstream. In some places, it's a tiny little area of water flowing. They call it the estuary. And then in some places you go, it's massive, like from here to the gate. And that was the first place in the island to have had electricity. How did you overcome any racism you faced? We didn't think of it as racism in those days. We just think of it as prejudice. But I had lots of that in the workplace, traveling on the public transport and the buses, even the church. Some people say to you, sorry, you can't sit here because this is my seat. And I was a bit surprised to hear of that when considering the church is God's house where we go to worship. And it's because of that reason why many black churches then established so black people could meet together to worship. But I have been in a church that is a mixed church. And some of you have been there, Westside Church. Did you ever think to yourself that you did not belong here? Um, no, I never did. Because the reason being, growing up in Jamaica and in school, we were told that England is the mother country. And what was meant by this is the fact that England uh, controlled what was happening in, in Jamaica, the government. And the Queen had a representative in Jamaica, which we call the Governor General. And back in those days, all the laws and whatever happened in the country was constituted in England and administered in Jamaica, as well as the other Caribbean countries, because the Caribbean countries are all like Jamaica. Are there any other things that you do for the local community? Yes, I do quite a lot for the local community. I'm very involved. That's part of me coming here today to just speak to you. Is I see it as part of my involvement in the community. When I came here, I, as I said earlier, I'm a Christian, and I joined the church that I was affiliated to in Jamaica. It's just up the road there, Westside Church. And I studied very early age the Bible, and I know the Bible very well. And so after me coming here, and one Sunday I spoke in the church, and they realized that I was very gifted spiritually, and I was asked to start teach, preach in the church. Then I taught in the Sunday school class. I used to go out into Hyde Park Corner with people, and I used to preach God's word to them as well. But in addition to my involvement in the church, which involved me in things like taking funeral service, officiated marriages. As a matter of fact, I'm dressed like this morning because I'm going to do a funeral service when I leave here later on. I made my progress in the health service to become a manager, and I was reflecting on my life, and I realized that I was first in many jobs in the health service as a black person. Because I worked at Guy's hospital, hospital and I discovered and I was told that by one of my managers who was retiring, that I was the first person, black man or person, ever to be appointed to senior management post. Did you go to school or college in England? When I came here, as I mentioned earlier on about going to college, I, I went to college and when, because I had finished, left Jamaica during the course of my studies, my secondary school education, to come here. And as I came here, I went straight into work. But I was fortunate to meet up with a former teacher of mine, and we were talking, 
and she told me how I could get back into the education system. And so I enrolled in a college where Sainsbury is now located, and that was called Southwest London College. And at that college, I enrolled to do course in business studies. And I do want to encourage you youngsters to, as you grow up, make use of the opportunity in your studies. Because I was then able in the, my latter years of my life, years of working, to go on and to study for my degrees, ended up with a master's degree. Where do you prefer to live? Here or Jamaica and why? Wow, <laughs> you've got me there. Uh, well, let's say I am settled here now and I enjoy life here because I've got all my family here. I have no family left in Jamaica apart from just the people that are second generation family. And I enjoy living here, but I also go back to Jamaica for holidays. And I look forward to that when I get back, get the sun, see the family who are left there. If you could give children of our generation one piece of advice, what would it be? Stay focused on your education and learn and look to the bigger picture. Work hard because I did that. That's why I've been able, despite the discrimination we as black people encounter in this country, I have been able to achieve and reach certain levels of management in the health field where I worked for over 40 odd years until I retired. Were there any times that you felt like you were being judged? Yes, as I said earlier on, when um, I came to here and the experience I had in traveling around or in the workplaces, in, in the job places too, because as I said earlier on, I was fortunate to always be successful in getting interviews because I started in the, in the health service. And in those days, you were encouraged to move up the ladder. And as I aspired to get up that ladder, it was not very easy. When I applied for the jobs, they invite, invite me for an interview. And when I turn up and have the interview and this, I was the only black person with all these white people. And later on, I get a letter to say, sorry, you have not been successful. And of course, I knew that it was because of the color of my skin why I wasn't successful. But the breakthrough came one day when I applied for a job at St. George's Hospital. And the person who interviewed me was an Irish man. And he, he offered me the job at the interview. He then said to me, Paul, I was very impressed with the way you presented yourself. You have qualification, as I said earlier on. I, you know, I studied to get my qualification in college. And I had some good experience behind me in the years that I worked in the hospital field. And so this man saw it in me and the potential and he offered me a job. And it was from there that I managed to progress. What was life like for you growing up in Jamaica? Life was very good because we live with families. And when I said family, we have land and a lot of the family live on the land, some people, some family members. The picture is simple like this. If you imagine the whole of this Wandsworth area, the family land and a number of family have their houses on it. So we were quite close to each other. In addition to that family network, some of them would go off into the city to in, in search of employment, but they would come back at certain times to visit us who are in the country. And it was lovely because we could always look forward to them bringing lovely things like sweeties or clothes for us because they live in the city and they would always get these lovely things to buy and bring them back for us, yes. Thank you.